Can I tell you about my favorite change-based skill? Yes, please. Okay, so it's called opposite action. Now, you might be wondering what in the world is opposite action, and I'm going to tell you. But before I do, I have to tell you a few things about emotions first. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay, so we have emotions for a reason. In fact, research reveals there's three main reasons why we have uh, emotions from an evolutionary perspective. Uh, they communicate to ourselves, to other people, and they organize action. So what I'm really trying to say here is that every emotion drives an action. So before we can get into changing anything, we need to understand which emotions drive which actions. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Marjorie, and you can decline and turn it back at me. But <laughs> let's say you're feeling fear. Let's say, you know, you walk out after our interview, you walk out. I don't know. You have an errand to run somewhere. Or you get out of your car. Oh, my goodness. There's a bus coming towards you. You are feeling fear. What are you going to do? Uh, jump out of the way. Yeah, exactly. So fear is going to keep you safe. It's doing its job. Fear functions to avoid when there's a threat to our life, our health, our well-being, if there's a bus coming towards you. So now that's fear. Now, um, what about sadness? Um, I think there's been a lot of sadness in the world right now. There's been a lot of loss. When people are feeling really sad, I think often they just want to sort of stay home, stay under the covers, stay in bed. Um, in some faith traditions, uh, you know, when someone dies, the family stays at home for many, uh, for several days uh, to sort of sit. And this helps us sort of repair and think about building a new life in the context of loss. So sadness motivates us to isolate or to isolate with loved ones, to take some time off to repair. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we talked about fear. We talked about sadness. I'm going to tell you about anger. Anger mobilizes us, right? It gets us going. Have you ever noticed that if you're angry about something, you're like... For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it could just be something like, um, you know, we're overcharged at a restaurant or we order delivery and the food we order doesn't arrive. And just that sense of anger motivates us uh, to ask for a correction. Now, I use anger broadly because it's the core emotion, but certainly it could be frustration, irritation, and certainly anger also mobilizes um, us for action in a broader sense. So I think many civil rights uh, initiatives and advocacy come about from a sense of deep-seated anger with injustice in the world, and anger helps us, uh, the anger mobilizes us to fight that injustice and advocate for change, which I th think we're seeing a lot now um, in our world. So yeah. just to recap, the three emotions we covered were, I guess, fear and the action that goes with it is avoid. We covered sadness and the action that goes with it is... Uh, uh, Isolate. Yes, you got it. And so anger and the action that goes with it, attack, although I don't love that word with advocacy, but it basically lets us, it helps us say, hey, there's something wrong here. Okay. So what about when the emotion is too intense, you want to change it? So you're just someone who's depressed has just been in bed for like weeks right? It's not really effective anymore. Or what about when people are feeling really scared and anxious and there is no threat to your life? So what if, you know, you're not feeling fear because there's a bus coming towards you, but you're feeling fear at, when you're sitting at home and you're worrying, what if one day I get hit by a bus or I get in a car accident? And so you're even afraid to get into your car because you're so worried about this accident. And now that's really limiting your life, right? Because you're kind of now afraid to like maybe leave your home. I'm really extending it here, but that actually does happen with fear. So the point here is you have to do opposite to what the emotion would have you do to change the emotion. So Ooh, my, yeah. this is interesting. <laughs> my very favorite um, way to change an emotion is through this skill called opposite action. And you're just acting opposite to the emotion. So fear. I remember a teen that I worked with who was really afraid of dogs. Now, this fear was understandable because he was bit uh, by a dog when he was a little kid, but it was really interfering um, in his life in the sense that he wouldn't go to any friend, and this was before the pandemic, but he wouldn't go to any friend's houses who had dogs. And so he was really avoiding so much and it was really interfering in terms of his ability to have healthy peer relationships, which are so important for, for all of us and especially for teens during those years. So what we actually had to do was instead of him avoiding dogs, he had to do the opposite. And so what do you think the opposite of avoiding dogs was? Surround yourself with a whole bunch of dogs. You got it. So <laughs> this is also called exposure therapy. We had to surround him with a whole bunch of dogs. It was one of the most fun uh, clients I ever had the pleasure of working with. 
And uh, some of uh, my grad students were able to bring their dogs into the therapy room. And so we sort of started with small dogs and worked our way up to bigger dogs. And that really changed how he thought because his brain took in new information that dogs are not actually dangerous. Yes, he was bit and we can validate that that was a one off, though, um, in the sense that most dogs especially dogs that, you know, he's encountering in a, in a, in a family home are not going to bite him. And so that really helped him uh, be able to approach and stop avoiding uh, dogs.